All right, as a Brit, it pains me. <laughs> <laughs> it pains me to tell you the first oh. ever satellite mission launched from the UK has failed. Well, the rocket ignited as planned, mm -hmm. and it appeared to be ascending correctly. But then officials say an anomaly during the second stage of the launch prevented the rocket from actually reaching orbit. CBS News foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett joins us now from London. Charlie, always a pleasure when we get to chat. Uh, so, you know, I... I'll admit, I was a little bit skeptical from the very beginning of the oh. seven. <laughs> Why? Why? They took an airplane, they strapped a <laughs> rocket onto it, and they expected it to go into space. But <laughs> I'm wondering, uh, beyond sort of my basic explanation of things, do we know more about what went wrong? Yeah, well, you know, sorry, Arrow, uh, England has a problem. Uh, as you said, you know, th this type of launch has been used in the past. In fact, it's been used very successfully in the United States. Uh, Richard Branson was hoping that would uh, work here. It's a vertical launch, so they use a, um, a modified 747. Uh, it was successful. It reached a height of 35,000 feet. It then launched the first stage of this rocket. Uh, the rocket reached 11,000 miles per hour. And then, as you said, an anomaly happened. Now, we haven't been given details of exactly what that anomaly is. It appears to have been the second stage of that rocket. Whether it was a technical issue or a physical issue, it just didn't reach the orbit that was necessary to launch the payload of nine satellites that were on board. So, yeah, it is a setback. It's a major setback. They've been working on this for something like 10 years for last night or overnight for that to happen. Um, we understand that whatever is up there will fall harmlessly into the ocean um, and probably burn and break up. It's not going over any populated areas, but it is a major setback. A lot of money has been involved, and it has worked in the past. And the reason it's a setback here in the U.K. is because um, the, the Brits are sort of global leaders, or at least global competitors, when it comes to satellites and the production of satellites, but it's getting them up into space, which is the hard part, and they're getting tired of having to sort of ferret them out to places like the United States and other parts of the world. They want their own space launches here. And we should also note that this, all those tests are, you know, to an expense. This is, not a, this is not a cheap endeavor by any measure. But, of course, people will be comparing Virgin Orbit's launch to the competitors in the States, right? SpaceX, Blue Origin, which themselves have been able to test, fail, you know, reattempt, test again, fail, test, succeed. So what's different about what the Brits are doing, perhaps, in its testing um, procedure that may explain what's going on here? Well, yes, you have Elon Musk, uh, SpaceX, Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin. What's different is it failed. <laughs> but <laughs> the, um, these space uh, companies, these organizations have failed. They've had their ups and downs in a manner of speaking in the past, too. Um, I think it was the technology that they were trying to use here. Uh, it really should have been a slam dunk. There, there were many... There have been successful launches, these vertical launches in the past, largely out of California, but using the same sort of technology that Richard Branson and his uh, launch pad used. So it is back to the drawing board, but the people that are involved in this, the, the, the space minister, said, you know, in his words, space is hard. He quoted <laughs> uh, President hard, Kennedy, right? <laughs> we do this not because they are easy, but, but because, because they, are, they are difficult. Yes, right. so, absolutely. So and there have been, but that's the important thing. So there have been advances. You know, this is back to the drawing board. Well, and that's what I want to ask you, failure, Charlie, because yes. poor Errol over here, I think we're hurting him as we continue to describe the failures. <laughs> What, what was the success? Because this is still a major milestone for the UK Space Agency. Yeah, th there are successes on several different levels. You know, just to get to the launch pad, as you've seen in the United States, same here um, in Britain, getting all of that technology together, it, it was all in place. And, you know, it was kind of all working. Every part of this uh, puzzle is critical. Obviously, everything has to work, but everything did work up until that last part. Now, they've already said this will be a setback, but they are marching forward. They're going to have, um, you know, vertical launches. They intend to do that in the next few months. They in intend to increase um, investment uh, in, in space uh, centers here in the U.K. So there will be lessons learned. There's always lessons learned in failure. But they feel that they've 
accomplished a lot. They don't want to be saddened, although cl clearly they're heartbroken. I mean, they were up all night watching this thing, and there were thousands of people that were gathered there to see this great success as they had hoped. But yes, back to the drawing board. It's a setback. I think we'll need to find out. I don't know why they maybe they they don't know themselves why what this anomaly is, uh, but there are corrections to be made. But they are marching forward. Uh, <laughs> it will be important to find out what that anomaly is. You know, these things are difficult but also expensive. Uh, thanks for caring about my emotions, folks. Charlie Daggett. <laughs> Charlie Daggett, great to see you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.